Today we're making meatballs. These only take about 30 to 40 minutes to make. They're super easy, they're cheap, and they're delicious. Let's get straight into it. To start our meatballs, we're going to add in 500 grams of pork mince and 500 grams of beef mince. These are on the fattier side, it just adds extra flavor. We're then going to follow that up with two whole eggs. Follow that up with 100 grams of fine breadcrumbs. 100 milliliters of beef stock. This is just going to add moisture. Grate in 50 grams of Pecorino Romano cheese. You can also use Parmesan. Grate in two cloves of freshly peeled garlic. Make sure you scrape all of that in there. Then we can generously season this with some salt as well as cracked black pepper. For an optional ingredient, you can also chop up five grams of flat leaf parsley or curly parsley, it's up to you. But like I said, this is optional. If you don't want to spend any money on this, you don't have to use it. Once you have all of that done, we can then massage all of this together, making sure everything is evenly combined. And there's a few different ways you can do this. You can weigh the whole amount and then divide it, but it's up to you how you want to do it. Or just create about three inch balls. Also, the reason that we added that beef stock is just to allow this to get some moisture. The meat is quite fatty as well, so these will be very tender and absolutely packed with flavor. With our meatball mix, we can then scrunch this in our hands just to form balls. Like I said before, the size is completely up to you, but don't make them too big or too small. You want about a three inch ball, roughly something that looks like this. Now what we're going to do is sear our meatballs. Just place a large pan over a medium high heat. We're going to add in three tablespoons of olive oil. You do want a nice amount just to get that beautiful sear all over. Then once that's hot, we can then carefully add in our meatballs. And if your pan's not big enough, you might have to do this in batches. Now after a couple of minutes, you should have a nice golden sear just like this. We can then flip these over. And these are roughly about three minutes on each side. Don't have to rotate them and get all the sides completely brown, just because obviously these are balls and it's quite hard to do. But we're just looking for a nice golden sear all over. Now after about three minutes on each side, you've got a nice little golden sear all over. We don't worry about the sides too much and these won't be fully cooked through. We'll just remove these from the pan and just place them on the plate for the time being. Also, the reason we're not fully cooking them through is because they'll be finished off in the sauce that we're going to be making next. It just adds better flavor and a delicious end product. Now for our marinara sauce, we're going to need six cloves of garlic. Just use the side of a knife. Just push this down to crush. This is going to activate the allicin, which is the compound within the garlic that gives it a strong flavor and aroma. Once that's done, just roughly chop this into small to medium sized pieces. It doesn't have to be too fine. Just make sure that there's no large lumps. Now into the same pan, we're going to add in our chopped garlic. Then with this, we're just gonna fry this off for roughly one minute, keeping it moving, picking up those flavors in the pan. We don't wanna burn this, because if we do, we will have to remove it and start again. Once that's done, we can add in 800 grams of tomato puree or crushed tomatoes. And then we can just stir this all through making sure you get all of that oil and flavor in there and that garlic can incorporate its flavor into the sauce. Once that's done, we can then add in roughly six basil stalks. It just adds a nice little aroma into the sauce. Then we're also going to add in two grams of dried chili flakes. If you don't like chili, they're completely optional. Make sure you season this generously with salt as well as cracked black pepper. And some people add sugar to their tomatoes to cut back on the acidity. It's completely up to you and it depends on what tomatoes you're using. We can then mix this all together, allow those flavors to become friends. We're going to bring it back to a simmer, reduce the heat to low, and let this cook for roughly 10 minutes just to slightly reduce. With the sauce now reduced, we can introduce the meatballs back into the sauce, and we can also add in any resting juices. I also do recommend just putting them in one by one, because if you pour them in, it's gonna create a big mess and you're gonna have a big tidy up. We're now going to cook this for roughly 10 more minutes. This is going to cook those meatballs completely. The juices within will go into the sauce. It will just create a fantastic product at the end. And make sure you just keep mixing these around just so they can get that sauce all over. If it does happen to get a little bit dry, you can add some stock or water, even a little bit more tomato if you need to. Just do what you need to do. Now in the meantime, we can get a pot 
water up to a boil. We can then generously season this with salt. We want it to be salty, but not like ocean water, just because there is salt in the sauce as well, going in the pasta just can become too much. Also, if you want to hurry this up, just place on a lid as well. Now with the water at a boil, we can add in 400 grams of our spaghetti. Just let this sit for about 30 seconds, just so it's easier to twist in. Then we can twist this in. We're going to cook this for one minute less than the packet instructions, just so that it's al dente. And we'll finish it off in the sauce, so the flavor of the sauce can get into that pasta and it just blends really, really well. Now after about 10 to 12 minutes on the meatballs, they'll be cooked through. Just going to remove these from the sauce. You can't just kind of drip off as much of that sauce as possible. And just be gentle with these because they are a little bit fragile. Also at this stage, the pasta will be ready. So we're just gonna remove that from the heat. Let it sit there for a minute because we're then going to add that into this sauce. And you can do that separately. You don't have to do that. You can serve the pasta on the plate and then add the meatballs and the sauce over the top. It's just up to you how you wanna do that. Before we do add the pasta, we're going to add in about 10 to 15 grams of fresh basil leaves. A Little bit of stems completely fine as well. Then just quickly stir that through. We're only gonna just stir this until everything's incorporated. This is gonna add a beautiful infusion into the sauce. Once the basil is slightly wilted, just grab your cooked pasta or al dente pasta. Just drain off a little bit of that water. We can transfer this straight into the sauce. Just be careful you don't drop it everywhere. And you're also not limited to using spaghetti as well. You can use all different types of pasta. Just do whatever you like. Now we can add a little bit of that pasta water. The starch within is going to help the sauce stick. And the amount again is up to you, just due to your desired consistency. And over a low heat, we're just going to stir this through. Cook this for about one to two minutes, just until that sauce has completely coated everything. When it comes to serving, scoop out that pasta and that sauce. This recipe should serve two to three people, even four, depending on the portion size. Make sure you get all of that different basil, the sauce, and stack it up nice and high. Place on your meatballs. I recommend about two to three, maybe even four again, depending on the size you rolled out the meatballs. Finish this off with some Pecorino Romano or Parmesan cheese. And if you didn't know the difference between the two cheeses, Pecorino is made with sheep's milk or goat's milk, and Parmesan is made with cow's milk. Hit it up with some cracked black pepper. And then we can finish this off with a little bit of torn fresh basil. Now we've only one thing left to do, that is of course, we can then dig in.